I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and part two of the Sony Xperia Ion and the Nokia Lumia 900 dogfight starts right now. Part two of a dogfight between Android and Windows Phone between two 99 contenders on AT&T. 99 that is. But before we get into that, special thanks to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones like the Xperia Ion and like the Lumia 900 for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game, which we turn around and give to you on the site. So when you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working with either of these devices. you walk in, they'll help you set up your email, your web, your contact settings, and more. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile. Now for part two of this video, I want to focus a little bit on customization and just some of the differences between those things you use on a daily basis, your contacts lists, your phone phone application, things like that. We'll start with the phone application. Now, first of all, you can see here, and we'll get into this in just a second on the Ion, but you'll notice it's green, obviously. That's a theme I'm running on the Xperia Ion, but you can see here green, and you got your dial pad out of the gate. Over here, you have your call history. So if I had called somebody, let's say 611, it would pop up right there in the call history. Now, these are what the uh, interfaces look like. So when you go in, you can take a look and see that just quickly, but we'll end the calls, and I'll come back over here and I'll show the history so you can see 611. You have to shortcut here to dial back, then I have some more information. I can add that person as a contact. But what I really like about Windows Phone, and this is an area where I think they've done it right, the People Hub. We'll come over here into People so you can see, for example, myself. I have the most recent Twitter update that I've done. Then I can scroll through my fake contacts here. And just for example, I have S and T. So I'll go in here to S and take a look at that. And you can see S, T are used, and they're blue and they're lit up. The other ones are not lit up. That means I have no other contacts other than S and T contacts. Now this is really useful when you get a bunch of contacts and you're like, hey, I don't have anybody with the last name of A or anybody with the last name or first name rather, uh, V or Z or Y or X. I've just got S and T. So I can go in here. Other than that, relatively simple and straightforward. There's no real uh, you know, aesthetic differences or looks over here. But I'm going to Bill Stevenson, which ironically looks a lot like Sam Johnson. 704-555-8904. I've got the shortcuts up here. Send message, favorite, and then edit. And I have the history here so I can see conversations, calls, and more. Down here, I can link contacts, edit those, and I can add a photo if I so desire. And I can sync those up. I have it synced up with Windows Live, as you can see over here. Now, this is cool, though, because it shows you what's new. I can see all my Twitter stuff that's going on. And then I can go down to my tile that's labeled me, which I really like. I can come over here and I can post a message. I can check in. So if I want to post a message on Twitter, for example, or on Windows Live, I can turn off Windows Live and I can say, hi there. And it posts it right away to Twitter from the Windows Live client. So I have notifications. I can come over here and see all these people that mentioned me in a tweet, though those are a little bit old, about two weeks ago. There are the new ones. And you can see profile. I can see what's new and more. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. I really like that. This is an area that uh, companies like HTC with Sense version 4, Samsung with TouchWiz, they've done a much better job at over the years is really honing in on those personal information management options. Because, hey, you got to differentiate yourself in this market, right? Right. First and last name, mobile, notes, and then same stuff over here. I can send calls directly to voicemail, but no real you know, tweaks or personal information management stuff over here that particularly helps in comparison to the, uh, the Lumia 900. So that's something to keep in mind. You do get a nice HD display over here. It's really noticeable when you're looking at pictures, you're looking at wallpapers. It's beautiful, it's vibrant. It's a noticeable difference over here on this picture versus something like this, despite having a clear black display that's a super AMOLED display. Very good on both, but if you're somebody that likes that quality picture, you want it to be as crisp as possible, the Xperia Ion is going to be your device. Let's take a look at cameras on both of these devices. 12 megapixels over on the Xperia Ion, 8 megapixels over on the Nokia Lumia 900. Carl Zeiss lens over here. So hey, you know what? It may stand its own. We'll see. We'll go to camera and also you can access it by clicking the shortcut button over on the side of the device. This is something that actually is rolling out with Android 4.1, which we heard about today known as Jelly Bean. I'll bring in the remote so we can take a picture of some up-close stuff like these buttons. We'll see if we can focus in on the text on the buttons. But you can see one of my favorite features about this, the ability to scroll easily between the active camera and the gallery. It's coming soon to uh, Android 4.1, and then for now you can get it over here. So Carl Zeiss lens, surprisingly though, been pretty disappointed with the camera quality on the Lumia 900. It's not the best in the world, especially when you compare it to devices that, yes, while they're more expensive, the One X, the Galaxy S3, the iPhone 4S, even the iPhone 4 pales in comparison to uh, the iPhone 4. So you can see we'll take the picture here. We'll do a couple of sample shots. And then you have the shortcuts over here. Flip it around to the front. 
video camera, and then you have some settings as well. I can change the scenes, the white balance, and I can turn the flash on and off and move back and forth. Over here, 12 megapixel camera. It's a really nice camera for 100 bucks. If you're going for a device, you only have 100, one Benjamin to spend, and you're like, I want something with a decent camera, this is gonna be a decent option. Let's go ahead and turn the flash off, though. Off, so we can get a comparison. 12 megapixel camera, though, very impressive. Take a look at this picture in comparison to some of the ones we took on the Lumia 900. Obviously not 100% scientific here, but take a look at the difference between those two with the same amount of lighting. Just absolutely different, and even when zoomed in, you can get a feel, you see all the hairs on the remote, that's actually kind of nasty, all the hairs on the remote here. Kind of scared to touch that. And then 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6, you can clearly see the numbers thanks to the 12 megapixel shooter. So great camera over here, the Xperia Ion wins that. Over here you can see when zoomed in, it gets grainy and blurry. So take a look at that, I'm gonna line this up so you can kind of see a difference. Not a scientific test by any means, but take a look at the difference between those two pictures. The Xperia Ion clearly wins the test. Now another area where Google wins is Google Play versus Windows Phone Marketplace. So we'll come into Marketplace and take a look. And it's definitely grown. It just passed 100,000 apps according to news reports. And then we'll come in here to Google Play, which is packing several hundred thousand applications. And you'll notice out of the gate, much like any other Windows Phone, you get a custom store within a store. So because this is a Nokia device, you get your Nokia collection. And this is where this phone has an exceptional value proposition in the fact that it offers some great stuff like Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, all free applications that come with a Nokia device, but stuff that Windows Phone desperately needs. So Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, Nokia Transit. I love stuff like Nokia Maps because you can download all the maps for offline use. I can check the reviews, the screenshots, and you'll notice that when the text scrolls off the page like that, all you have to do is swipe over on any of the menus and you can easily access all of that stuff. Install it from here, and then over here I have apps, music, books and movies. So I have quite a similar setup over here. Not necessarily the same by any means, but I have my music, I have podcast apps and games. Don't quite have movies in the Windows Phone Marketplace just yet, but I have apps over here. Typical setup in Google Play with a bunch of different squares and rectangles, kind of like Windows Phone actually with a different kind of uh, amalgamation here between rectangles and squares. You proud of me for saying amalgamation? That's a big word for a video. You should be proud, internet. You should be really proud. Draw something, for example. One of my favorite games, actually I hate this game. I don't know why I'm saying that on video, but I just don't get it because I have a lot of lazy friends that play with me and then they, they, hint at me. they hint at it. They don't ever tell me, you know, they don't draw it. It's like blank, 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 blank. And I'm like, stop. And they're like, yes, how'd you ever get that? And I'm like, because you drew four blank spaces and gave, me, gave it away. Anyway, draw something by OMG POP, now absorbed by Zynga. You can see description what's new. Reviews and more all on one page along with your screenshots here and then I can scroll up and down and see what users also installed. So a little bit more, uh, you know, more established mature setup over here, but I still like this one quite a bit because I can scroll and see apps, games, music, and more. So it's got a nice clean setup. Search is another interesting one on both of these devices. We're gonna allow that. And you can see Bing pre-installed, obviously Google pre-installed over here. A lot of search changes coming to Google in the coming weeks, coming months with Jelly Bean. It's, it's anybody's guess as to whether this thing's gonna get jelly bean or not. Hopefully it'll get at least ice cream sandwich, and uh, perhaps you'll see some search benefits there as a result. Not necessarily the jelly bean ones, but some other ones. And you can see, I love this little feature here where I can look at the picture and kind of get some uh, guesses about the picture, and I can come down to the copyright sign and see exactly what it is. But it'll tell me where I'm at so I can say, I'm in the middle of San Francisco, middle of downtown San Francisco, just outside of the Union District. I want some coffee. Let's get some coffee. Pete's Coffee and Tea nearby, Starbucks. There's gotta be a blue bottle. There's a blue bottle, good. I actually been to that one several times. So blue bottle there, images, I can see coffee, web, and more, all from my fingertips. Over here, kind of a similar setup, but we'll see. It should GPS my location. Assuming I remember to turn GPS on, I did. It's a blue bottle right there, Starbucks. It brings up some different results. Hilton Union Square coffee. I guess there's a Starbucks in the hotel. And then last but not least, personalization. This is something I really wanna talk about because it's an area Android really has an edge on uh, some of these new platforms, or relatively speaking, new platforms like Windows Phone. Coming to settings, we'll take a look at display. We'll look at themes. I have it set to Emerald, or as I called it in the Xperia Ion review, Emeroid by mistake. But I can come over here to Sapphire, and I can change it back to Sapphire, you'll notice the colors will immediately change. I can do some other stuff like lock screen settings. This is really where Android is ahead, and you look at a device, again, not to bring these back into the equation, but like the One X and the Galaxy S3, just an incredible amount of customization. It's all about making the device your own. So you have missed calls, new messages, new emails, calendar events, and then over here, you've got a couple of different things. You've got Nokia Blue as a theme set, but you got you can change the background from dark to light, although keep in mind it is an AMOLED display, 
so it prefers darker colors, but I can change the look of the tiles, and I can come in here to the wallpaper, for example, and I can change the picture of the wallpaper. So I can come into this, and let's say, you know what? I like cupcakes. Who doesn't like cupcakes? We're going to make that the wallpaper. And then I can come out of here and see that on my lock screen. That's really the extent of the customization I can do on this device outside of ringtones. Over here, I can change themes, I can change wallpapers, I can change lock screen wallpapers versus standard wallpapers. Just a lot of different options to make this device my own. So you know it's a really tough call and like anything else, go into the store if you're really torn between these devices. See if you can get some extensive hands-on time because it's really going to depend on what you like. If you want fluidity, maybe you're coming from like an iPhone 3G, a 3GS, you're like, I'm so sick of iOS, but I really like the fluidity. Lumia 900 is going to be your choice out of these two devices. If you're coming in, you're like, hey, I only got 100 bucks to spend, but I want the best camera, I want the best such and such, I want the best this, the best that. You're going to be happy with the Xperia Ion because it does have a great camera and a really solid display for 100 bucks. Battery life on both of these devices before I crown the winner, 1,830 milliamp hours over here, 1,900. Oddly enough, battery life's not great on the Xperia Ion. I can only make it about seven hours uh, with moderate use. I'm gonna have to revise those numbers because I'd say about seven hours, at least for me, when I uh, was using this device before the Galaxy S3 rollout. I've had this device forever, but I was under embargo uh, on the Xperia Ion. So that's why, if you're wondering, how's he only had this for a few days? And he's talking about it like he's had it for a couple of weeks because I've had it for some time. Battery life, not the best over here. Really surprisingly decent. When I carried this device as part of the 30-day challenge on the site, I was easily getting 12 hours uh, of use out of the Nokia Lumia 900. So battery life, the edge goes to the Lumia 900. Now, both of these are awesome devices in the call quality department. They do a good job, but one of these has to be the winner of the dogfight. And like I said, it's hard because it depends on what you want. The winner of the dogfight by a narrow margin, and hear me out as to why I'm calling it this, Nokia Lumia 900. That's the winner of the dogfight, and the reason why both of these are killer devices, it's a great entry by Sony back into the market. The biggest challenge with this device is going to be, you know, it's got a great spec, like an HD display, it's got a 12 megapixel camera. The biggest challenge, still running Gingerbread, still has some lag to it, running a last generation processor, the S3 as opposed to the S4. Then you look at Windows Phone and you're like, yeah, you know what, the specs aren't the, you know, necessarily the best in the world in comparison to what you get, the dual core, the quad core, all that stuff. But it's an awesome phone with 4G LTE for 100 bucks. It's got a nice display, a decent camera. It's got a nice polycarbonate shell. But more importantly, it's really fluid. And I think for people, the whole package, when you're looking at the whole package of what a smartphone offers, the Lumia 900 comes in just by a hair. Just because it offers a fluid, consistent, awesome performance with a decent app store. Camera may not be the best in the world, but the battery life's decent. It just offers a good all-around smartphone for 100 bucks. This one offers some great features like HD, our HD display and then a 12 megapixel camera, but much like anything else in this world, there are things that I love and hate about it, whereas I feel like this one just seems to be a little bit more consistent across the board. So if I were telling somebody, you got 100 bucks to spend, I would recommend the Lumia 900 for a more well-rounded device. So keep in mind, this Xperia Ion with the Sony platform, it's going to be a great value proposition once they get that established and get that up and running as part of this device. I'm sure you're going to see more from Sony in the coming weeks. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with both of these devices, so stay tuned. Dogfights between the Ion and other devices, dogfights between the Lumia 900 and other devices, so stay tuned. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog, and if you're on the fence, or let's say you bought one of these, you love it, you're like, Aaron, you're an idiot, the Ion's the best, or Aaron, you're awesome, you're right, the Lumia 900 is the bee's knees. I want to hear from you. Let me know, cast your vote, phonedog.com slash rankings. Let me know which phone you like the most, leave a review, and be part of Phone Dog's official smartphone rankings. Hit me up on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron, let me know what you think between between these two devices, definitely a hard dogfight as they always are. But again, in terms of an all-around value-added proposition, I think the Lumia 900 offers a better value all around with things like a polycarbonate shell and a pretty decent spec list. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with both of these devices. We'll see you next time.